You're welcome back to the Pulse. Now, authorities at the Kualibu Teaching Hospital have stopped admitting emergency cases at the labor ward due to a malfunctioning oxygen plant. According to the public relations officer of the hospital, Mustafa Salifu, issues with the plant arose over the weekend and a team of engineers are currently working to resolve it. As a result of this breakdown, the hospital is no longer admitting pregnant women with peculiar conditions, but have been uh, have actually been referring them to other medical facilities over the past few days. My colleague Jennifer Kerma was at the hospital earlier today, joins me now in the studio with more on the story. Jennifer, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, when you went to the maternity block today, tell us what you saw. Well, when I went there, uh, my initial impression was that everything was going smoothly because there were a number of women at the waiting room. Um, they were being served by the nurses and the women there at the counters. You know, it seemed that everything was going on well. But I had heard these accounts of some women being turned away. So I spoke to some of the pregnant mothers there, and they even said they hadn't heard of there being any suspension of admissions, mm -hmm. which aroused my suspicions. I went to speak to Mr. Salifu on this issue, and he explained that that the oxygen plant at the hospital at the moment is running below capacity, which means they, they, uh, uh, in order to prevent any, you know, prevent endangering, you know, pregnant uh, mother, uh, the mothers who have, you know, particular circumstances or conditions that require extra oxygen, they're rather referring them outside the hospital. But, you know, we can take a look at that interview right now. What is happening is that we have a problem with the oxygen plant, the, that is the departmental oxygen plant that supplies oxygen to the maternity block. And then we call in the engineers to uh, work on it. But in the interest of our patients and in protecting, in saving lives, uh, we thought that if we are not having the regular supply of oxygen uh, to the theaters and then the labor wards, uh, it would be safe to refer patients to other facilities within the metropolis whilst we take time to work on the uh, on the plant and then thankfully yesterday uh, we were able to fix the plant and the engineers are just doing their auditing to, uh, uh, to to establish that yes everything is up to scratch and when that happens if they give us a clean bill, bill of health we will then advise the department to resume normal operations they are doing that this morning and then uh, uh, in, in the course of the day once they give us the clean bill of health, uh, we will resume the normal operation. So the problem is not with anesthesia equipment or anesthesia machines. The problem is with the oxygen plant that supplies oxygen to the, 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 the theaters and the labor ward for work to go on. Jennifer, let me understand something. Mm -hmm. Is that to mean that for any pregnant woman today mm -hmm. who's referred to Kolebu for attention, Mm -hmm. She can't be admitted, not at all. No, she cannot be admitted at all. They are not taking new cases. They have, you know, normally in hospitals, they have their, their um, patients who are there already. They have their cards and folders and everything fine. They are being admitted in case of anything if they have to deliver. But if you're a new mother, you're coming to start the process afresh, mm -hmm. they will not take you. And if you're a new mother who has, maybe you have a case of high blood sugar or you need, you know, a cesarean section or something, they will not accept you into the hospital. So when they say they will not accept you, they are refer referring you to another facility mm. where do they refer them to well they refer them to other maybe other private uh, facilities or maybe even to the 37 military hospital but i asked mr mustafa salifu on that issue as well we needed to scale back we needed to scale back operations so that uh, we'll not endanger the lives of a patient because uh, we need the we need oxygen in order to take care of patients in the theater. We need oxygen in the labor ward to assess our patients to deliver. So if those, uh, if we don't have oxygen uh, on the regular basis, then you'll be endangering the life of patients if you still go ahead to admit them. And yet you don't have this critical component to uh, see them. That is why we started asking patients to go to other facilities within the metropolis while uh, the, 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 the engineers work on the plant to restore normal operations. If your case is not an emergency, we will st you will still be seen and then uh, giving your medication for you to go home. It means you will not require admission. So such patients who are still seen, so we don't have to uh, tell everybody not to come. 
some will still come through, but once uh, those who require you to do at the sound work, those who require you to take them to theater, you have to uh, then uh, refer them to other facilities within the metropolis. So you can issue a blanket statement and say and tell all the patients not to come. Right, so uh, that's Mustafa Salifu. He speaks for the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. The, the biggest problem here is this. Even in, in as much as uh, he says that they are referring cases to other hospitals, mm -hmm. if someone is referred from, say, up north, with a very big complication mm -hmm. to come to Kolebu, mm -hmm. you come, you don't get the care, you can't afford private, then what happens to you? Well, in a situation like that, the hospital did not specify exactly what they would do for them. Maybe in those uh, situations, they have a special facility, but he did not specify exactly. Because tell you what, Kolebu is the biggest referral facility in the country. In fact, it's a premier. And so if the biggest facility does not have oxygen, it has ramifications for healthcare in the country. We'll see if we can get you some more responses, for, especially from the health ministry, on what can be done, especially when we do not know how long the situation will persist, when the new oxygen plant or the repaired one will come online. Thank you, Jennifer, for these details there today. Welcome. Quite a worrisome story to look at today. Well, the, in other news, the sports minister, Neil Antti Van Der has justified the comments he made at the NDC's campaign launch, suggesting that the country's presidency is not meant for short people who wear glasses. Many have described the comments as an attack on the MPP's flag burner, Neku Fuado. But speaking on the AM show today, Mr. Van Der Poy dismissed the suggestion, insisting that persons drawing such conclusions ought to be apologizing to him rather the fracture, the fracture. President Yelia J. Kalena J. Akabani of Equitioha. Being a president isn't a matter of height. Neither is it about how short you are, nor the kind of spectacles you wear. Being a president is about the love you have for your country. People are knowing what they lack and ensuring that. Their needs are met. President President if you listen to me carefully, you see, MPP are making a mistake. The mistake they are making is that they are really giving effect and meaning to the biblical saying that evil to him who evil thinks. Their thoughts, their minds, their uh, hearts is so full of mischief that when you speak, they will not even take their time to analyze what you have said. They just look at the negative aspect of it. When I open my mouth to talk, I know what I'm talking about. I don't just insult. I, I make statements. The statements could be punchy. The statements could have effect on you, but I will never insult you. And in our language, sometimes we say, Kasanfi le nujo. So if I say something because of your own perceptions, you just want to take it as a cloth and put it on, you may be making a mistake and you may be portraying your real identity when otherwise I didn't mean to do that. I said something in Ghana. What I said is that the presidency is not about how short somebody is. It's not about the sort of I use figures of speech. In our culture, uh, somebody said, if you want me to be able to give you, read this thing for you, bring me my glasses. Glasses stand for intelligentsia in our culture, our setup. And then I use another figure of speech, handsomeness. So I said, it is not about how short you are. It's not, about the, it's not about the glasses you wear. It's not about how you look. It's about your love for this country. The care you have for the people. 
I don't think Nanado is a force. Since, I'm being frank with you. Since then, you, you've been having a lot of commentary over it, but, and you think they have misinterpreted your yes. statement, one. And they have to apologize to me. They rather have to apologize yes. to you. Now They have misrepresented what I said. And they have... You see, it's, it's like somebody writes a fiction, and then you go, and you pick the characters in the fiction, and you put yourself into it, and ask the person, why did you write about me? Well, how can you how can you do this? So that's the clarity he's given on the comments he made. He says that he will not apologize for the comments he made on Sunday.